What is up, Gorilla Nation? It is Relentless here, bringing you yet another Division 2 build video. But if you happen to be new to the channel, or you're just enjoying the content, then please be sure to ground and pound that like and subscribe button. Also, reach up there, trigger the bell, and turn on post notifications, so that way you never miss a live stream or a video that is uploaded. Well, I want to uh, first and foremost say if you want to see a full extensive gameplay of this particular build, that link is in the description below. It's entitled Don't Turn Around. But I will send you over to a few short clips of this build in case you might not have the time to fully check out that video, but yet I want to still include some gameplay and this particular uh, same as the build video. So I'm going to send you over to it and we'll see you guys back in here in a moment. As a friend of my friend is an enemy. Yeah, get the lead. You said we were friends. What up, Relentless? You did, you didn't kill shit, did you? <laughs> oh, oh, hazard protection. Where is he? Oh. Ah, oh, he's like one shot, rogue. Now we can go get it off just to piss him off. Can I cannot get a pill, you. You die too, you hive dependent schmuck. As you can see, even with my mediocre PvP skills, that I can hold my own and it dishes out a ton of damage. Now, if you have better PvP skills, then you will actually do even better than what I do with this build. But also keep in mind, this is tweaked and made to my personal preference and playstyle. You might want to tweak it, and I always urge everyone to tweak it to their playstyle and to cater to their speed of gameplay versus the likes of mine. You might prefer one thing over another as far as when it comes to simple stats or different mechanics that involves, you know, intertwined in the build. So tweak it as you see fit. This is to my liking and to my playstyle. So let's hop into the build. 422.6k armor, 136.9k health. That is almost 600k toughness. To be exact, it is actually 562,000 in total toughness, which is considerably a lot tankier than most of the Berserk builds that I see typically either in build vids or in the dark zone. Most are running around 400k armor and like 20k health, which is just dumbfounding to me. But anyways, we'll get into that in a moment. Starting out with the RPK, 31.2K base, unhinged, allegro, protected reload, but don't forget to factor in the plus 15% to targets out of cover. And with that damage to targets out of cover, that brings it up to 35,847. But you can use whatever uh, LMG that you prefer. It's just, I believe that the RPK is the most underused LMG currently. It used to be the Pestilence, but since the Pestilence got a buff, uh, so did the RPK, and it is a complete monster. As far as when it comes to the base damage and RPM, I think by far it is uh, the best LMG other than, you know, the likes of exotics such as the Pestilence. The second one would have to be the military MK46. As you can see, this one is at 34.7K. The M60 took a hit and is no longer king. And when you factor in the RPM along with the damage, in my opinion, it's a, an, it's a good debate when it comes to which is the best uh, LMG as far as black market RPK versus the military MK46. But it's, it's personal opinion, in my opinion, I go with the RPK just for the damage and the RPM. Now mod it as you see fit, but as you can see I almost have a 100% stability and that is because I get the 15% stability in the optics, 20 plus 20 rounds, 10% stability and then another 10% accuracy and also what makes the RPK great is the uh, reload time because generally most of all the others uh, will have five to five and a half second reload time and even with the extended magazine getting plus 20 rounds and negative 10 percent reload speed your reload speed is still only three seconds so you, even a few seconds that you can shave off can really mean the difference between living and dying in a gunfight now as far as secondary i went with the merciless for the holster talent because it synergizes well with the spark backpack talent 
and that is brutality. While holstered landing a shot has a 5% chance to deal 100% weapon damage as explosive damage. And even though it says 5% chance, typically halfway through the magazine you're going to proc spark 99.9% .9 of the time. So that 5% may look really, really low, but it actually procs, procs more than it does it. So keep that in mind. Now, as far as the holster talent on my sidearm, I go with stop, drop, and roll. While equipped, rolling removes burning, bleed, and poison status effects can occur once every 60 seconds. And primarily, uh, Division 1 used to be what I call the Nomad Dependence, because that is primarily their one-dimensional and that's all that they rely on, and that was basically Division 1. Division 2 has become more or less the status effect Hive Dependence. Uh, you'll see people running like Devil Famaz with Sadist on it and then Wicked on their gloves with Berserk and it's all synergized around them actually applying status effects. So with this particular particular uh, reiteration of this build, that is why I have Stop, Drop, and Roll. Now if I go in and just like in the, those gameplay, uh, those guys had, each one had a hive and then one had seeker hive combo and that was all that they were relying on was total status effects and explosive damage. Well with the blues that I have, the four defensive mod slots, I have armor and health mods with percentage armor and then I have uh, ones with explosive resistance which is easily switched out. Now for the hazard protection side of it, for this particular iteration I have 20% hazard protection. but. I'm not one dimensional and you should, uh, shouldn't be either, so always have a plan A and a plan B, so that way no matter what you encounter, you have a fallback. So let's say I die to status effects, I get sent back to the checkpoint. Well then I switch to this particular version of the build. I lose a little bit of health, I gain a little bit of extra armor, but I also gain 60% additional hazard protection to go along with 20 that I already had, so a total of 80%, and the damages stay essentially the same. It works out really, really well, and it's you know, poses to those one-dimensional players that are relying on only status effects and they have no backup plan, no other build to go to. They are specifically one-dimensional and you are not. That way you can uh, more or less be water and uh, be more fluid and that way you can adapt to whatever you encounter in the dark zone. And that's why I always tell you guys that. But anyways, let's hop into the build, starting out first with the chess piece. Now there is multiple opinions when it comes to the Berserk talent but you need to find out your sweet spot as far as your armor to health ratio. It depends on how much of benefit that you want to, I guess, actually benefit from Berserk. The full potential of Berserk is when your armor is completely popped and you are relying on your health pool. That's why most of the time if people are totally DPS, then they want health over armor. They want all the health that they can get stacked on. Some will have like 350, 360k health and then only have like 180 to 200k armor. And that's how you get the most potential out of Berserk. But if you're only wanting to get, you know, say 8 to 16% additional damage uh, with your Berserk, then you can go with more like my consistency of the armor over health. But I went one little step further and so that way I still have 136k health to rely on once my armor is popped. So I can still dish out, you know, 10 to 15 bullets and still have enough time to retreat into cover, to apply an armor kit, to drop a heal, or whatever the case may be. You do not, and I want to reiterate, do not make a 400k armor build with only like 20k health. That is redonkulous and just dumbfounded when you think about it. Especially when you accompany it with a hive, you're kind of more or less counteracting yourself um, you're not getting any kind of potential out of it you're just like you're just throwing a build together and just satisfied just getting eight percent additional weapon damage but to get the at least amount of benefit from berserk in my opinion you at least need 100k health and as you can see you can still easily obtain 400k armor in doing so and get the most bang for your buck when utilizing berserk now, starting with the attributes, 10,822 health, 22% total armor, 10.5% weapon damage, of course, Berserk. And this particular chess piece has two defensives and an offensive mod slot. In the first defensive mod slot, 4865 armor, 2736 health, and 3.5% total armor. There's actually some uh, good armor mods in the vendors right now to where instead of that health value, it actually, actually will have like 4% explosive resistance. So you can uh, kind of add those up and there's actually some that's out there that has 10 to 11%, I believe that was last week, um, 
So you can essentially, out of four defensive mods, you might lose a little bit of armor, but I can still get over 400k. But then in turn, I can get 40% explosive resistance just in defensive mod slots. So that way you don't necessarily have to put two-piece negotiators to the one for that 30%. And then that 40% uh, in turn will help you uh, definitely survive with this survivability, with this amount of armor and health, no matter how uh, strong their seekers actually get. You'll be just fine. Then in the offensive mod slot, 6% LMG damage. And then going into the likes of the defensive mod, we have 5991 armor, 3% total armor, and then 2149 health. Now on to the holster. It's a Heligard holster, 14% health, 41,165 health, and then two offensive mod slots. That is why Heligard is still hands down the best brand set in the game, just because of its uh, versatility when it comes to the likes of having its attributes as well as mod slots in them and these particular one the two offensive ones i get an additional five and a half percent lmg damage in one and another five and a half percent in the other for a total of 11 percent weapon damage just for those two offensive mod slots now the third and final piece of the heligard five and a half percent total armor five percent weapon damage twenty six thousand five ninety three armor hardened and spark damaging enemies with skills or explosive grants 15 percent weapon damage for 15 seconds that is why I have the Merciless as my secondary, but if you want to forego and don't say, let's say you don't have the Merciless, you don't want to rely on skills, you can proc it with your grenades, but if you just would rather not deal with it all together, you will be sacrificing in this case 5% my roll, just basing off this uh, piece in, as an example, I lose that 5% weapon damage and spark, so a total of 20% weapon damage. But if I just want the survivability, this piece still has the offensive and defensive mod slot, so I don't lose nothing there. I get the vital that puts my health up to 191.9k, but as you can see, my armor is still would be at 399 armor. So essentially, it's still almost 600k armor, and if you actually add the two numbers together, I'm actually a little more tankier than the other iteration, but... I'm losing out on 5% weapon damage as an attribute and that potential 15% weapon damage from utilizing Spark. So it's whatever your personal preference is when it comes to the likes of uh, using the talents of Spark or just foregoing it all together and just getting, you know, a lot tankier. And of course, the defensive and offensive mod slot in the offensive, another 6% LMG damage in the defensive, 6,056 armor, 2,806 health, and then 2.5% total armor. I have one piece of Petrov on that gives me 10% LMG damage, and then as the attribute, another 11% LMG damage, and then devastating, plus 5% weapon damage. Now on to the two-piece true patriot. For getting the two pieces, you get 10% total armor, and then of course, as the attribute roll, I got an additional 12% total armor, and then a defensive and an offensive mod slot. Now this particular one, I get another 5.5% in the offensive mod slot, and then 43.20 armor, 3% total armor, then 4,086 health. Now there is multiple different combinations you can go with. Let's say, for instance, you are one that likes to utilize a lot of cover. Then, since the True Patriot knee pads have also two offensive mod slots, you can essentially change out the knee pads over to the holster, and then put on a Heligard holster. And if you'd like to shoot from cover, then you can utilize the ones uh, as you like, I, like I'm showing you on the screen with composure. While in cover, gain 10% total weapon damage. So you actually be a little tankier because this has two de defensive mod slots. So you're gonna gain some armor out of it. And as you can see, I don't really lose any health whatsoever. I just have to put in another defensive mod here and then I actually will have more armor based on my percentages I already have than what I do now, but I lose out that offensive mod slot. And you can do the same uh, like on the mask. It's just I have found um, I'm not one to utilize cover that much and just in certain situations like when I'm trying to heal up or you know trying to be more tactical or getting out of line of fire or breaking line of sight, then you know typically I will be in cover. But um, since I'm generally more or less, you know, uh, an open running gun type play style, then I feel that I don't really need composure here. So that's why I went with the overall flat base damage by having that other offensive mod slot versus that little extra uh, tank ability, if that's even a word. I know I have crappy grammar. But anyways, moving on. 
on the mask 29,280 health 7% crit chance this is not a crit chance build if you want to actually see the crit chance version of it with crit chance LMG RPK the same RPK I'm utilizing here then check out the cardiac arrest build but I, this is the best mask that I have because it has that 29,280 health on it and that offensive mod slot that gives me another 5.5% weapon damage to my LMG so the sky's the limit. You can mix and match different variations of it when it comes to like the Heligard pieces and the True Patriot. It all depends on your personal preference. So now let's go over the stat sheets itself. With the RPK, as you can see, only 10% crit chance, 25% uh, crit damage, but we're not utilizing any crit. We want that uh, plain blunt force trauma of just the, the overall base damage and not having to rely on crits. And our overall total weapon damage for all weapon damage is 48.5%. And the LMG damage bonus is 62% for a total of 110.5% total damage to our LMG, which is really, really nice. And then these are the rest of the stats as followed. You can uh, stop the, uh, the video if you want to to get any particulars, but I think I've taken up enough of your time. But I will continue to scroll through. And I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, we're almost right at 11K. I feel ho so humbled and blessed by all the support and love. I appreciate it. Let's keep this train going. But anyways, guys, that's going to wrap it up. Appreciate you, and we'll see you fudging later.